Assalamu alaikum. Hi everyone. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will discuss about polymerase chain reaction. So let's get started. Introduction to polymerase chain reaction. The amplification of nucleic acids by target amplification involves making copies of a target sequence to such a level that they can be detected in vitro. This is analogous to growing cells in culture and allowing the cells to replicate their nucleic acid as well as themselves so that they can be visualized on an agar plate. The difference is that waiting for cells to replicate to detectable levels can take days to weeks or months whereas replicating the nucleic acid in vitro only takes hours to days. PCI is the first and prototypical method for amplifying target nucleic acid. How PCR was developed In 1983, Gary Mullis conceived the idea of amplifying DNA in vitro. What Mullis had envisioned was PCR. Over the next month in the laboratory, he synthesized oligos flanking a region of human nerve growth factor and tried to amplify the region from human DNA. But the experiment didn't work. The first successful amplification was a short fragment of the HDK life plasmid PBR322. He named the method polymerase catalyzed chain reaction because he used DNA polymerase to drive the replication of DNA. Components of a typical PCR reaction includes target template, primers, nucleotide bases, enzyme polymerase, PCR buffer, Accessory components, nucleases free water, probes or cyber green dye, and reverse transcriptase enzyme only for RT PCR. Now we will discuss all these components individually. First of all, DNA template. The template may be single or double stranded DNA. For diagnostic purpose, the template may be derived from the patient's genomic or mitochondrial DNA or from viruses, bacteria, fungi, or parasites. Nanogram amounts of genomic DNA are sufficient for consistent results for routine clinical analysis. 100 nanogram to 1 microgram of DNA is usually used. The best templates are in good condition, free of contaminating proteins without nicks or breaks that can stop DNA synthesis or cause miscorporation of nucleic type bases. Templates with high GC content and secondary structures may prove more difficult to optimize for amplification. Primers Primers are a critical component of the PCR because they determine the specificity of PCR. They are chemically manufactured on a DNA synthesizer and analogous to the probes in plotting and hybridization procedures. Primers are single-stranded DNA fragments, usually 20 to 30 bases in length. The forward primer must bind to the target DNA sequence just 5 prime to the sequences intended to be amplified, whereas the reverse primer just bind 5 prime to the sequence to be amplified on the opposite strand of the DNA. Nucleotide triphosphates are the built-in blocks of DNA that extends the primer. An equimolar mixture of the four DNTPs, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine is added to the synthesis reaction in concentration sufficient to support the exponential increase of copies of the template. DNA polymerase Gary Mullis first performed PCR by using DNA polymerase isolated from E. coli, but high temperature denatured the enzyme. Then, the thermostable enzyme TAC polymerase was isolated from the thermophilic bacterium Thermus aquaticus. Other enzymes such as teeth polymerase from Thermus thermophilus were subsequently exploited for laboratory use. DNA polymerase enzyme adds DNTPs to extend primers in PCR reaction. PCR buffer PCR buffers provide the optimal conditions for enzyme activity. Potassium chloride, ammonium sulfate or other salts of monovalent cations are important buffer components. 
These salts affect the denaturing and annealing temperatures of the DNA and the enzyme activity. An increase in salt concentration makes longer DNA products denature more solid than shorter DNA products. So, shorter DNA products will be amplified preferentially. The influence of buffer or salt conditions varies with different primers and templates. Divalent cations are also important buffer components. Magnesium chloride also affects primer annealing and is very important for enzyme activity. Magnesium requirements will vary with each reaction because each NTP will take one magnesium atom. Furthermore, the presence of EDTA or other chelators will lower the amount of magnesium available for the enzyme. Too few magnesium ions lower enzyme efficiency, resulting in a low yield of PCR product. Overly high magnesium concentrations promote misincorporation and thus increase the yield of non-specific products. Lower magnesium concentrations are desirable when fidelity of the PCR is critical. Accessory components are sometimes used to optimize reactions. They include bovine serum albumin. It binds inhibitors and stabilizes the enzyme. Dithiothalidol provides reducing conditions that may enhance enzyme activity. Form amide added to the mixture will lower the denaturing temperature of DNA with high secondary structures, thereby increasing the availability of for primer binding. Cowtropic agents such as Triton X100, glycerol, and dimethyl sulfoxide. They also reduce secondary structure to allow polymerase extension through difficult areas. They also contribute to the stability of enzymes as well. Thermal cycler. Initially, PCRs were performed using multiple water bath or heat blocks set at the required temperatures for each of these steps. The tubes were moved from one temperature to another by hand. In addition, before the discovery of thermostable enzymes, new enzyme had to be added after each denaturation step, further slowing the procedure and increasing the chance of error and contamination. Thermocyclers or thermocyclers were thus designed to rapidly and automatically ramp or change through the required incubation temperatures, holding at each one for designated periods. Controls of PCR Running controls in PCR is essential for maintaining and ensuring the accuracy of the assay. There are three controls in PCR. Positive control. Positive control is a PCR template that is known to work under the conditions used in the laboratory. It ensures that the enzyme is active, the buffer is optimal, the primers are priming the right sequences, and the thermal cycler is cyclic appropriately. Negative control. Negative control is also called contamination control or reagent blank. A negative control without DNA ensures that the reaction mix is not contaminated with DNA template or amplified products from a previous run. A negative control with DNA that lacks the target sequences ensures that the primers are not annealing to unintended sequences of DNA. Internal control. Internal control also called amplification control. In this type of control, a second set of primers and an unrelated target are added to the reaction mix to demonstrate that the reaction is working, even if the test sample is not amplified. Amplification controls are performed preferably in the same tube with the test reactions, although it is acceptable to perform the amplification control on a duplicate sample. This control is most important when PCR results are reported as positive or negative, by which negative means that the target sequence are not present. Steps of a PCR cycle The amplification program consists of a specified number of cycles that are divided into steps during which the samples are held at particular temperatures for designated times. The temperature will then determine the reactions that occurs and changes the temperature, changes the reaction. First step of a PCR cycle is denaturation. PCR starts with one double-stranded 
DNA target. In the first step, the double-stranded DNA is denatured into two single strands in order to be replicated. This is accomplished by heating the sample at 94 degrees centigrade to 96 degrees centigrade for several seconds to several minutes, depending on the template. The initial denaturation step is lengthened for genomic or other large DNA template. Subsequent denaturations can be shorter. Second step of PCR cycle is annealing. Annealing is the most critical step for the specificity of the PCR. In this step, the two oligonucleotides that will prime the synthesis of DNA hybridize to complementary sequences on the template. The primer dictates the part of the template that will be amplified. Annealing temperature optimized with the reaction conditions and primers. And annealing temperature will range 50 degrees centigrade to 70 degrees centigrade. Third step of a PCR cycle is extension. In this step, the polymerase synthesis a copy of the template DNA by adding nucleotides to the hybridized primers. DNA polymerase catalyzes the formation of the phosphodiester bond between an incoming DNTP determined by hydrogen bonding to the tablet and the base at the 3' end of the primer. This step occurs at the optimal temperature of the enzyme 68 degree centigrade to 72 degree centigrade. At the end of one cycle, one copy of double-stranded DNA has been replicated into two copies. And at the end of the PCR program, millions of copies of the original region defined by the primer sequences will have been generated. The protocol given below is typical for a standard PCR. Make sure you have the required apparatus and reagents to hand, including a thermocycler, template thermostable DNA, stock solutions of all DNTPs, a DNA polymerase, primers, stock solutions, etc. Prepare a reaction mixture. For example, a mixture of target DNA stock buffer, primer, stock solutions of DNTP, stack polymerase, distilled deionized water to give volume of 25 microliter. Use appropriate positive and negative controls. Cycle in the thermal cycler. Access the effectiveness of the PCR, for example, by gel electrophoresis and ethereum bromide staining. How to control PCR contamination? PCR is very sensitive technique and is susceptible to contamination, particularly from DNA from the skin and hair of the operator, from previous PCR products from airborne microbes, and from positive control plasmids. A number of routine precautions can be taken to avoid such contaminations. Separate the pre-PCR areas from the post-PCR analysis area. Positive airflow, air locks, and more extensive measures should be taken. Autoclave all buffers, distilled deionized water, pipette tips, and tubes. Wear disposable gloves at all times and change them frequently. Protective coverings for the face and hair are also advisable. Use a biosafety cabinet dedicated to PCR use and located in a separate lab from that used to store PCR products or prepare clones. For very sensitive work, use a strong UV light inside the PCR workstation or cabinet for 20 to 30 minutes before starting your work to degrade any contaminating DNA. 10% bleach is widely used method for decontamination. Frequently wiping bench tops, hoods, or any surface that comes in contact with specimen material with dilute bleach or alcohol removes most DNA contamination. Another widely used chemical method for decontamination control is the DUTPUNG system. This requires substitution of DTTP with DUTP in the PCR reagent master mix 
which will result in incorporation of DUTP instead of DTTP into the PCR product. PCR modifications. PCR has many types for different applications. Some of them are given below. PCR modifications in clinical laboratory. PCR today has been adapted for various applications. Several modifications are used in clinical laboratory. Of the large and increasing number of PCR modifications, following is a description of those in standard use in clinical molecular laboratory. First of all is multiplex PCR. In multiplex PCR, more than one primer pair can be added to a PCR so that multiple amplifications are primed simultaneously, resulting in the formation of multiple products. Reverse transcriptase PCR. Amplification by PCR requires a double-stranded DNA template. If the starting material for a procedure is RNA, it must be converted to double-stranded DNA. This is accomplished through the action of reverse transcriptase enzyme isolated from RNA viruses. Nested PCR Nested PCR is a modification that increases the sensitivity and specificity of the reaction. And number four is real-time PCR also called quantitative PCR. It is a very useful modification of the PCR process. Real-time PCR enables a simultaneous amplification and quantification of template DNA in a sample by establishing the number of copies present by working in the exponential early phase of the amplification. We will discuss all these four modifications which are used in clinical laboratory in another video. Troubleshooting in PCR In conventional PCR, problems with reaction components and amplification protocols are diagnosed by running a gel. Now we learn about possible causes and solutions of some main problems. Number one, if no PCR product is detected, repeat the procedure, checking carefully that all components are added to the reaction mixture. If there is still no product, check that the annealing temperature is not too high or the denaturing temperature is not too low. If too many bands are present, this may indicate that number one, primers may not be specific. Number two, the annealing temperature is too low. And number three possibility is there is an excess of magnesium ions, DNTPs, primer or enzyme. Bands corresponding to primer dimers indicate that number one, the three prime end of the primers show partial complementarity. Number two, the annealing temperature is not high enough. Number three, the concentration of primers is too high. Applications of PCR. PCR is used in many research labs and it also has practical applications. Some applications of PCR are given below. Diagnosis and screening of genetic diseases and cancer. Rapid detection of slowly growing microorganisms, example mycobacteria and viruses such as HIV. HLA typing in transplantation. Analysis of DNA in archival material. DNA fingerprinting in forensic science. Preparation of nucleic acid probes. And last but not the least, clone screening and mapping. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.